of you may know, I've been following the work of Alan Wilson and Baron Blackett, who are two historians who started out in the early 1980s researching Dark Age British history. And they have done a lot of work pertaining to King Arthur. Um, and I, I recommend, if you're not familiar with their work, just go on my website, richplanet.net forward slash history. You'll see all of the TV shows covering Wilson and Blackett's work, and there are some books uh, at the back of the room there. Now, in 1986, their work was recognised by the establishment because the establishment organisation, the BBC, took interest in what they were doing. They sent two journalists to Wilson and Blackett's uh, property. They um, looked at the evidence that they had, evidence that King Arthur was a South Wales king, uh, king of Glamorgan and Gwent, with principalities in North, uh, East and West Wales, um, his kingdom probably extending into England. Um, they were very interested in that. And they, as I say, they came to look at their evidence. Wilson and Blackett showed them various stones, uh, one at Ogmore Castle. They took them to various sites and they showed them documents which they say prove that King Arthur was a, a South Wales king who died in 579 AD. Uh, so I'm going to show you a clip. This is the BBC 6 o'clock news in 1986. The time is 6.16. In common with most historians, the two men believe that Arthur was an authentic king of Britain who gave rise to the legends of Camelot, the sword and the stone, Guinevere and the Knights of the Round Table. Laurie Mayer reports. The apparent proof that King Arthur was man, not myth, is kept at the bottom of a garden in Cardiff. This ancient sword-shaped stone inscribed Rex Artorius, King Arthur, comes from what's claimed to be the legendary king's last resting place. The stone is said to have arrived by boat up the Oweni River near Bridge End 1400 years ago. In their lifelong quest for the real King Arthur, amateur historians Alan Wilson and Baron Blackett have put their interpretation on ancient manuscripts. An impeccably authentic manuscript of the year 822 tells of the body of a very important man with a stone being brought up this estuary. Uh, this is the secret burial of Arthur. The delivery of Arthur's body upriver was, so the story goes, kept secret because his son was too young to succeed him. According to Wilson and Blackett, this is the very cave where the body was temporarily buried. They point to signs of a square-cut grave hewn by hand from the rock. They claim the local church provides evidence of Arthur's family links with the area. Burial stones they regard as vital clues in their historical detective work. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the stone of Paul, son of Myrick, a brother of King Arthur. At Ogmore Castle, just down the road, they cite another stone actually naming a King Arthmail, which they translate as Arthur. Wilson and Blackett have now filled several volumes with their exhaustive fieldwork and research, a mass of evidence from so many sources that even academics find it hard to contradict. This bleak hillside, a thousand feet up, marks the end of their quest. In a church they describe as the Westminster Abbey of the Dark Ages. Wilson and Blackett claim it's cost them their homes, their jobs, and 100,000 pounds to find this spot and say with confidence that here lies King Arthur. So, they're not the only experts who claim that King Arthur was a South Wales king. We've got Professor Morgan of Cardiff University stating this on film, which has been screened on Rich Planet, uh, the author Chris Barber and various other experts. Um, this is the kind of genealogical chart that Wilson and Blackett have produced over the years. We've got King Arthur here who's dying in 579 AD. Now if you go on Wikipedia you will find some of the names on this chart but you certainly won't find the King Arthurs. And, it, and that's because it's something that the establishment has covered up. And the reasons for that, well we can, we can speculate. Imagine they're digging up um, a huge historical figure of British history in South Wales. It's be a bit like the Braveheart thing, except King Arthur actually won his battles. <clears throat> so this, this could be something, it could be the thin end of a wedge um, uh, which the British establishment may not like. Here's Alan Wilson at work 
um, at his house, and you go in their house, it's just full of ancient documents and evidence. And the difference between Wilson and Blackett and university historians is that they don't have, um, they don't have students to teach. They can set their own agenda and go off and find new evidences, which not many historians do. And the bleak hillside that was screened there in the BBC article uh, is just here. It's just northeast of Bridgend. It's probably about 25 miles from where we are now as the, as the crow flies in Glamorgan. And it's a place called St. Peter's Supermontum. And this is the church here. Now, that article from the BBC was 1986. They actually had this church excavated in 1990 although the BBC didn't come to film it, but they should have. And it seems that um, once the information about Wilson and Blackett's research had reached the higher levels of the British establishment, something was, I think something was put in place to suppress um, their work. It was something that was not going to be accepted. But they ploughed on with their research and they excavated this ruined church, one of the oldest churches in Europe, uh, in 1990. And one of the things that was found in that excavation is this. This is um, a solid electrum cross, and on it is inscribed Pro Anima Artorius, which means for the soul of Arthur. Now, I don't think you're going to get much more concrete evidence than that, other than actually finding his body um, of King Arthur being a South Wales king. This is a close-up. This is possibly Arthur on his horse. Now, this is a certificate um, which shows the, the metal content of that cross. So they have had it independently tested, and it says on the certificate, the metal cross, which is 79% silver and weighs around 2.5 pounds, the metal content of silver with other metals is consistent with artifacts and relics of antiquity. So you can get an approximate date based on the percentages of, of different metals, and it is from Dark Ages. Now, as I said, this evidence has been denied by the establishment cover-up. There's been more than one murder attempt of Wilson and Blackett. And if you don't believe that, um, just have a look at, on my website and watch all of the programs which presents all of the evidence of the murder attempts, the um, smear attempts in the media. It's absolutely disgusting. Now, I asked Alan Wilson who actually excavated that cross, who found the cross. Because I wanted to get independent evidence, I wanted, as, as I said in part one, don't believe anything that you see or hear, go and find it out for yourself. So I wanted to f ask and find the person who dug that cross up. Alan told me it was Richard Melbourne, but he'd been informed by a Welsh journalist that uh, Richard Melbourne had passed away. So I then endeavoured to find Richard Melbourne's wife, just so that I could get some independent corroboration that yes, he did dug dig this cross up and yes um, she can remember when it happened so I went to his house in my steg knocked on the door who answers the door Richard Melbourne he's still alive so I then ring Alan Wilson and um, I, I give the phone to Richard Melbourne and the two of them had an hour-long conversation reminiscing about the dig you name it so he was really pleased that his, his friend because Wilson and Blackett now live in the northeast of England they live in Newcastle um, so Richard Melbourne then says to me, well, do you want to come up to, to the church? And I'll actually show you where I found the cross. I said, I'd love to. <clears throat> so I went up there. This was just about three or four weeks ago. That's me and Richard outside St. Peter's Church in Glamorgan. And he's pointing there exactly where he dug the cross up. Uh, and I did, I, I've made a piece for the Rich Planet TV show all about this, all about Richard Melbourne. Lovely bloke, 80 years old. And um, as I say, he, he, took, he got one of his mates in a 4x4 four four to take us up the mountain. Right, I'm in a place called Mysteg, which is not far from Bridge End, and I'm with Richard Melbourne. Now, Richard uh, took part in the archaeological dig organised by Alan Wilson in 1990 of St. Peter's Church. Uh, now, on that dig, there was an artefact found, which, uh, and Richard was the person who actually dug the, dug the thing up. This was the Electrum Cross That's right, yeah. um, with Pro Anima Artorius written on it. So, can you just tell us first, Richard, um, how did you get involved with Alan Wilson and what was it that, that got you onto the dig? Well, I was always interested in Welsh history, you know, and a mate of mine was a mate of Alan Wilson's. Mm -hmm. 
and you've seen about this dig up in Supermountain, this church. Would you like to go on it? I said, yeah, I'd love to. So anyway, he arranged for me to go up and he had to have a permit to get on site. He got me a permit and I went on site. I was there for, I don't know, about a month, I suppose. What sort of tools did he use? Were you well, I was on a trowel. You know. On a trowel. And what, were you be given specific areas to, yeah. to, to go down? Right? Yeah. Scraping away, boring stuff, all boring stuff, but you know, it has to be done. And this day, I was scraping. I was, it was deep. It, it must have been on the floor level, around the floor level. It must have been a, a dirt floor in that church. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I was scraping away and I thought, it's a funny place <laughs> for a bicycle uh, pedal to be. Because all I could see, that bit of silver, you know. Right. So I kept scraping away the front of it. And when I'd scraped all the front off, now that cross wasn't showing where pro animo atorius was written. It was, that was the other way. Right, so it was you know face what I'm down. Yeah, well, it was at an angle. Mm -hmm. I scraped it off, put the trowel behind it. <laughs> you can imagine what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the day, isn't it? Right. Now, I didn't know the significance of pro animo atorius. Right. But I did know the significance of Artorius. Right. But not this first two. So you knew that Artorius was a reference to Arthur? Yes, yeah. yes. So anyway. So was it easy enough to read when, once you'd lifted it up? Could yeah, you I had to clean it off. There was oxides on it and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. But the imprint of that cross was still there. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Uh, it After you'd taken it out of the ground? Yeah, it had been there a long time, like, obviously, for it to be there, the imprint of it. Right. And I've, I've got a, um, an aerial view of the of the church, Richard. Yeah. Would you just point out on there r approximately where it's around about this point here? So inside inside the church, I guess this is another entrance here to the left. Yeah. Uh, so a little way in here. So how long did the dig last for? But the dig itself, I think, lasted about a month, five weeks, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, Richard. And. Um, how many people were involved in the dig on a day-to-day -day basis? There must have been about six or eight, I suppose. Right. Including okay. Alan and... Yeah, and were you involved in putting the tarpaulin over the, ch no. over the church? No. That was like contractors or something? Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Alan has told the story about how there was a huge gale which oh, kind of wrecked the... It's terrible. So can you just explain, explain that? Were you there when... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. And Alan said that there was... Uh, some of the documents were found in nearby valleys and this kind of thing because people actually brought them back and I suppose it was, I, there were documents there, they were on the table if I remember mm -hmm. After you found it and took it out of the ground, yeah. um, who did you tell first? Uh, there was a chap there called Martin Langford, the archaeologist mm -hmm. uh, I don't think Alan was there. I think he was off site. Yeah, he's it? told me that he wasn't there. He wasn't. No. He wasn't on the site. So, so just tell us how it then did you? Just tell us what happened after you got it out of the ground. Well, we were all excited looking at it, and, you know, and uh, you know, time went on. Alan came back on site. Mm -hmm. It was great excitement, wasn't it? Right. When, especially with me, when I found out what the significance of right. the cross was. Right. And it just went on from there, really. With the bloke with the camera, I know he was there with a young lady. I forget her name anyway. So they were filming yeah, the dig, the which dig. incidentally Alan can't get hold of at the moment. He's th that film has been sort I of made unavailable. Yeah, I didn't see it myself. You didn't see it? No. I don't think anyone's seen it. What about um, the theory that Arthur's body is either is that is in that region somewhere? Do you go along with that, Richard? Oh yeah, definite. If you read the Persevere and everything, you know, it points to that. That's the area where he is, like. Right, and and uh, do you think he's in the church or in the mound or, or I somewhere? I think he's in the mound myself, in the boat. Right, the boat shaped burial mound. Yeah. Right, which is not far from there. It's. It's uh, right, 
right from the other to end of the street. Uh, can I just ask, did you get paid uh, for your work on the day? No, no, I didn't. So you pay him. No. But I think the archaeologists were paid, were they? I expect so, I don't right. know. Right, okay. And um, did you have any involvement with um, Alan and Barham after that, after that time? Oh, yeah, yeah. When uh, some chap, I forget his name, is from my state, he was, he, he reckoned that the uh, large cross was planted there, you know, which it wasn't, definitely not. Right. Couldn't have been, impossible for it to have been. Yeah. Because I thought, and I know the imprint of that cross was in that earth. Mm -hmm. Now that couldn't happen if it was planted there. Yeah. I mean, this is something which certain people have put out this information and this guy from Meistegs obviously heard this from someone yeah. who's maybe trying to cast aspersions on it. Well, the, the inference was I, I should, I would have been involved in a, in a scam like which I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I found the cross, I know what happened, mm -hmm. No, I was there. Mm -hmm. For anybody to say that that cross was planted there, would have to be there and see, and even if they were there and seen, they wouldn't have made that statement. You know, because oxides, they can't put oxides in it, can they? Yeah. You, know, yeah. you get it off stone and earth and all that. Mm. But there were. Was there anything else of interest found on that site? Not really. Because I understand there were some um, human remains there? Oh, yeah, a lot. Uh, right, okay, so this was some graves that were. Yeah, well, on a higher level, like, you know. Right. We went down past them, but it was all treated with respect, like, and that. After the dig had finished, were you not frustrated that you couldn't dig down further and see if there was more artefacts? Do you think there might have been some th more things there? I don't know. I right. don't know. Would you like to see an excavation of the mound? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Right. There's something of importance there for that church to be there, because that church was put there to honour where was in that mound, I think. Right. Who that is, I don't know. Right. It could be the King Arthur. King Arthur, it could be. Right. And what about um, further afield than that particular site, other than the church and the mound? Uh, do you have any knowledge of any other sites, Richard? Well, the, up in the forestry, the forestry have covered a lot of uh, evidence up, you know. Mm -hmm. For no, no other reason to grow trees, nothing that's right. sinister about it, it's just that they grow trees there. But there's mounds all over the forest here up here. Right. There's a Roman fort there, there's an ancient British fort there, the Bulwark area, and it's all there. And there's a fort, like, what I have read that uh, the British were fighting a rear guard action, and they found he was going ahead of them, and they caught him at this place called Kuntaladba, which means Valley of Slaughter. Right. In England. And right there, to the left, as an ancient British fort. What's, what's your opinion of uh, Alan Wilson in terms of a, a historian? Just give us a bit of background on, on what you know about, about Alan Wilson. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant. And he's got a mind like a computer. Yeah, sir. So mm -hmm. You ask him anything. And he's back up everything he says, mate. Yeah. Where you can check. They've had quite a lot of problems over the years in trying to get their work recognised. What, yeah. what, what's your opinion of that? Have you got an opinion on why it's not being accepted? Well, I think it's the, it's the English establishment, to be honest, historians and all that. And they won't sit down with Alan and discuss history. Mm -hmm. They won't. As he said, would you get in the ring with Mike Tyson? <laughs> I've seen him on that. And he was right. Why don't they sit down and talk about it? Yeah. Because he'd lose them. And all the, the, the other reason is, because in all fairness, Al and I have slagged the royal establishment off, like from Victorian times, most of the stones are uh, stone for a want of a better word. Mm -hmm. All the stones in, in Wales, are, anyway. But why do they try to hide British, uh, British Welsh history? Mm. They don't want us. They don't want us to cast us aside. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're maybe worried that there'll be some sort of upsurgence of national identity, uh, which was they're going to lose part of their, their empire, maybe. Yeah, it's um, a bit late for that now, isn't mm, it? Mm. But, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible what's been happening. Mm. I think the world of Ireland, I've got to be honest with you, and I haven't blinded my judgment on him because I, I like him or anything like that. It's just, 
everything I have read, he backed up. Backed up. All right. He, he called uh, German George. You know, the, the, the establishment don't like talk like that. They even said the German Queen, like Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah, I think. <laughs> and they don't like it. Yeah, yeah. It's. I think he's. Uh, he's, 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 he is, he's told me he is happy to speak to establishment people and he is happy to go along with the current regime yeah. uh, and, and not criticise the royals. He's told, he said that. You're a late now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that he, what, what Alan says is he'd rather have Queen Elizabeth than President uh, Cameron or President Blair. Yeah. He's yeah. saying that, uh, that the royal is better than having... Yeah, she does a good job, doesn't she? Well... <laughs> Wow. I, 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 I'll, I'll, for, no, I'll for not make a comment on that, Richard. Mm -hmm. um, his, his historical research kind of undermines the royals, but at the same time, he, he actually wants. He realizes that they are ultimately are the power. Therefore, he's not going to get anywhere with his history unless oh, unless it's accepted by them. That's right. Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a job. But the, 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 there's an author called Adrian Gilbert who worked on with yeah, yeah. Alan and Barham on one of their books, The Holy Kingdom. Uh, I think that was the one that you showed me, didn't? What, wasn't it? You said that you had a copy of the Holy Kingdom. Oh yeah, I got it. Now, yeah. um, he's written a new book, apparently, and what he's trying to do in that book is he's took Prince William's genealogy via his mother, Prince uh, Princess Diana, and he's trying to find links to uh, Arthurian monarchy yeah. uh, through Diana. So he's tr they're trying to bring in and show that William, the future king. Has has got some British, uh, British Welsh. Y yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, now, why Adrian Gilbert's doing that is, you know, you maybe ask him that. But uh, I guess half of Wales could probably um, show that they're related to this heritage. Well, I can take take you uh, eight miles from you and introduce you to a chap who's uh, Eve, Eve Tracy, and then you back to Ayrston up Krugan. Right. And he's a, a farmer. Right. So. All right, Richard. Well, thanks for speaking to us. And uh, Richard's kindly uh, offered the use of a, a four wheel drive. Yeah. So at some point later in the week, we're going to have a drive up to St. Peter's Church and maybe film the exact spot uh, where you unearthed the electron cross. Yeah, it's not only that. You, you see the boat. But it's there. You, right. And somebody tried to say, oh, it's a sheep pen. Now, if it's a sheep pen, you don't have a narrow opening for the sheep to go in. Mm -hmm. You have a wide opening. Yeah. 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 But it comes to a point. All right. And the road have been altered going to it. Right. Well, we can film the, the mound as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much for speaking to me today, Richard. You're more than welcome. We're getting a lift off uh, Richard's friend called Terry. Richard's friend Terry has got a four-wheel drive that we're going to get in. When I was up there, it's 20 years, aren't we? It was an Electra, silver and gold mix, you know. All oh, right. I mean, for 10 percent, anyway. 10 percent? I hope you're recording this. <laughs> four-wheel uh, he sold, he sold, cut the bits out that he don't want, don't he? No, don't cut that. Are you sure to uh, no. <laughs> I want 10 percent. Who is this person, bro? Uh, he's a historian, you know. All oh, right. Very clever man. And it's in his possession, is it? Yeah. Well, it was his Dixie. Oh, right. His dig it was, is it? Yeah. And how old do you reckon this cross was? It's from about 579 AD. Good God. That's the time of Arthur, see? There was no graves there, like, uh, in the church where really, I found it. Yeah. It must have been the eye of us when they were walking up the eye. And I reckon there must have been a dirt floor by you know. There's a ruined church up here, St. Right. Peter's, and um, right. the, the guy who bought it, or the, the two guys who bought it, Alan Wilson and Baron Blackett, they, they put a fence right the way around it, right. because they bought the land, right. but it was just ripped down and... Uh, oh, derelict like... Yeah, it's a derelict church, but they've tried to protect it, because it's of historical importance. Yeah, that's right. And um, there's just all of the livestock, sheep and cows and stuff, it's just overrun. Yeah, it's just overrun it like. Yeah, yeah. But um, there's parts of it still really need excavating, you know? Yeah. Like there's a, there's a mound there, which there could be anything in there. Good, good. 
and they still own it to this day like oh yeah yeah all oh, right so we're not trespassing <laughs> yeah so if, so if we're in the church and the yeah. farmer tells us to get yeah. off the land we're, yeah. we know we're all right we're, we're, we're oh, yeah. all right we'll just ah, give alan a ring no no we'll be all right anyway because it's public right away above there's the a, church right there's a thoroughfare through there is it yeah we take that up do you think they've actually changed, the farmers changed the road at all there, Richard? Has there been, or yeah, is it? Yeah, I'll show you when I get up there now. Right. They went right through the boat. Is that a bit naughty then, were they not oh, supposed to? it was to? a bit naughty, yeah. I don't know who done it, mate. Right. You can't say that farmer or this farmer did no, it. Right. Farmers haven't got no consideration no. for the past, have they? They move a boundary, they yeah. change a boundary, they put a road in, whatever they want a road, make right. life easier for themselves, do they? Right. You know, they shouldn't have done it. Because the road used to go around the boat. Yeah. But right. now it's cutting. Go through it. Some of the boat, yeah. All oh, right, okay, this is the boat shaped burial mound. Yeah. But the farmer may not even know that it's an ancient no. mound. No. Uh, that's be, right. There's probably no. Um, because some of these mounds have got, they are recognised as ancient monuments. Some yeah, of them, they've right. got they've got plaques on them, yeah, but they're right. generally described as Norman. But yeah. uh, obviously, Alan would say they're not they're not Norman at all. They're, yeah. they're much earlier. They're ancient British. Ancient British. Yeah. Big forward about that. Right. So we're part way up the mountain, and um, Richard's just pointing out this tumulus. Yeah. yeah so there's a tumulus there, which is a mound of some kind. I think it's a burial mound. The farmers ploughed the field all around it. So that's a bit of archaeology there in the middle of that field. Yeah. Alright, let's just zoom out. Okay, well, we're heading on up towards St Peter's Church, which is uh, in this direction. Up this up this track here. Yeah. Well, that is a defence of some of us, see? Defence system? Yeah. Of the floor. Okay. I don't think your car would have got up here, Rich. I don't think it would, no. <laughs> well done. I'll tell you what's near the church, or not far, it's them pylons. High voltage. There's pylons, high voltage, don't be below us, straight in front of us. Or is it looking too wet over there? I think the church is just over the brow there. It is. What do you reckon that is then, Richard? That thing in the ground there? Have you got an idea? You'd need to excavate it. So we're, we're, we're part way up and we think that St Peter's Church is just over the, the brow of uh, this hill here. Um, are we going to try a different road then, uh, Terry? How long is it since you've been up here, Richard? Twenty years. Since we did Tw Twenty odd years since you did the dig. You've not been up here since you did the dig. No. Oh yes, my, I took my wife up there one day. We walked. Right. And if I remember, we walked up there and it's straight over there now. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a bit of a trip, and down the other side, the church was in the little dell. Which is the parish road then? This is on it now. Oh, this is the parish road. Yeah. This was the M4 of the 500s. <laughs> the M4 of the 500s. Of, of the 6th century, yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. But in Norman times, obviously, the roads are down there. Yeah. So this church must have been the Anne King Arthur's day. One of the oldest churches in Europe, God Alan. Where's he going now? I don't know. It's not a chair. No, just check the depth on that drop there then. So, oh, not going to pop that one. <laughs> <laughs> a good driver, mainly. Yeah. So Terry keeps getting out to check the um, the depth of them. Uh, to check. Oh, aye, yeah, aye. Right. That should get a clean view, all right. It's a tire's clear, he said. I said that before. Oh. 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 Nearly fell down that ditch oh. just there. Oh. <laughs> more sensible road up ahead, yeah? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's more like it. <laughs> so we can see it. Straight through there? Yeah. Okay. Ah, it's going the wrong way. 
So could we have come up on this road in the first place, Rich? Yes, most probably, yeah. <laughs> I recognise that mound there. There's the church there, look. Can you see Just it? Just straight ahead, yeah, I can see it. That building on your yeah, left? Yeah, that's it there. That's the church, Rich. Where now? On the left, through that cut there, look. See it there? Oh, that's it, yeah. What, a helicopter landed there? Yeah. When was that? When you were doing the dig? Yeah. When really? I found that cross, he wanted me to jump in with him and then I said, no, I'm not going in there. I never heard that part of the story, Richard. Tell us that again. So, he, he, the, the bloke that was more or less financing it, he's not fully financing it and putting his weight behind it, he, uh, he provided an helicopter, you know. All right. And he said to me, when I found the cross, I don't know, everybody gets a moment of fame, like I suppose. Right. Uh, he said, I will ride up in the helicopter. I said, no, no, no. Two days after, it crashed. N right. Not too bad, like, but it... Uh, right. And that was it. Right. But there it landed. On th just this, the brow of that hill there, just, yeah, to, just to the right of the right. church. Yeah. So it mounted, landed here. Right, so this road here that we've just come up on, that's actually going through the boat shaped mound. Yeah. Right, yeah. So where, where's the actual edge of the mound? Is that it? It's there, look, see it? Yeah. yeah. That, the raised part here? Yeah. You just go there? Oh, there, look. All right, I've got it. I've got you now. So, so this is the edge of it here? Yeah. Right, so it's coming round. And there, look, see it? Yeah. Right around. The other side, and then... Right, okay, so, so this is all part of the mound here. So this is the edge of it, yeah? Yeah. Action. So do you want to point out the approximate spot, uh, Richard? And which, do you remember which way you were facing when you were digging? You were facing that way? Yeah. Okay. Right. And, and what, which way was the cross orientated uh, to, to the church? Was it, was it, yeah. do you see what I mean? Getting like, and it was at a slight angle. Right. So the, so the, so the top of the cross was facing yeah. behind us? Yeah. Right, so it was facing east-west, I guess, and in the same orientation as the church? Yeah. Yeah. So that, so you were... Which is the Christian line for churches, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When they were digging here, there was an overhang there. Right here. Still there, isn't it? An overhang? Yeah. I don't remember it. I think it'd have collapsed since you know, then. And there were features in the wall on the altar. Right, so where would the altar have been there, uh, Richard? Must have been there. Right. So this is the altar, where, yeah. we, st where we stood now, or just in front of it? Yeah. You had the congregation, yeah. So the congregation would have been in that side there. So Richard there is just on the edge of the, um, the boat-shaped burial mound. We'll get an aerial view of it from Google Earth. He's just standing on the edge. Yeah, now that church has just got cows grazing on it. And if it was converted into a tourist attraction and the truth brought out about it, you've got a huge hugely important area here in South Wales uh, and this is what Alan Wilson's point is that it would bring 30,000 jobs he claims to the South Wales region people would come all over, from all over the world um, to Glamorgan to see that site if it was excavated further and it was given its proper name
Now, one of the mounds that Wilson and Blackett have written about is a mound at a place called Unisabul, not far from here. Um, and this is it here. It's a naturally occurring hill, but on top of it, they claim that there's a, an additional piece of earth put on there. And they've actually had ground penetration radar testing done on this hill. They've also had deep metal detection done on this hill. So this is a huge, a huge earth mound. So this is Alan in 2005 with the um, ground penetration radar equipment. Now based on the tests that they did in 2005, they did, they did deep metal detection, which I'm going to speak about in a second, and they did uh, ground penetration radar testing, and also comparing this mound with other mounds that have got things inside them. This is what Wilson and Blackett claim is inside. Like I say, it's not far from here. Um, he reckons it's an excavated chamber with five drainage shafts coming off the north side of the hill, uh, and these keep, the whole, keep this area dry, take all the water off, and he reckons there's an excavated tunnel in, into the side. This is a cross-section of one of the drainage sumps, so they've got special stones in which prevent any sort of weeds growing around there so that the, 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 the sump can allow water to flow through it. This is a photograph of one of the sumps, which you used to be able to see on Google Earth. You can't see them anymore for some reason now. And now this is Alan Hassel who did the metal detection for them in 2005. And again, don't believe any, anything anyone tells you. Try and find it out yourself. Uh, and I've interviewed Alan Hassel who's an independent researcher. Uh, I, I should have recorded the telephone call but I didn't. I spoke to him for about two hours and these, this is from my notes of speaking to him. He said that he used a Pulse Star 2 metal detector. These metal detectors, they're like they're a meter square, the, the coil is huge. You stand in the middle of the coil, and you've got like a box of electronics. They're, they're two, three thousand pound each. So that's the metal detector that he used, which will go down 20, 30 feet. He marked out a 30 to 40 yard square on top of the hill. He scanned the land in one meter wide strips, horizontally and vertically. After 45 minutes, he hit a huge target. The device went off the scale. By scanning vertically and horizontally, he determined the target was approximately two foot by four foot non-ferrous metal. He then uh, used ground penetrating radar. Well, he didn't. Uh, Wilson and Blackett did, but he witnessed the ground penetrating radar picked up two of the drainage tunnels. He also confirmed that the farmers didn't come to witness the find. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure what's in there, but I'm pretty sure that, that t some of this archaeology is there, and I think there's probably something inside the hill, but I have no clue what's in there. Wilson and Blackett claim, and in order to understand why they think this, they claim that it's the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I don't know that. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, for those who don't know, is the box which Moses had built in round about 1400 BC in which to house the Ten Commandments which were written on stone, two tablets of stone given to Moses by God. I have no idea that, that, that this artifact is inside of that hill but I think there is something inside of that hill. Now <clears throat> if this was inside of that hill I think it's worth digging the hill up um, because as you might know I'm into UFOs and I suspect that Moses, um, or the person who was Moses, because some people say Moses was a title, I suspect that Moses, th that event on Mount Sinai did happen, and something happened there, and some law was given to Moses to give to the people, but I don't think that that word was the God of the universe. I think there's an intermediary going on here. I think it was a God, a God, not, the, not God, but a God. That's just my opinion. I don't want to offend anyone who, who is a Christian, right, or, or, or a Muslim or, or a Jew, right? But just my opinion, I think that there are advanced beings who've been on this planet before us and who possibly had a hand in making us, right? And I think that, 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 that event on Mount Sinai was extremely important. So whatever's inside here is evidence of that. Who wouldn't want to see that? But as I say, I'm, I'm not convinced the Ark of the Covenant is there, but I think it's worth excavating it just to see what is there. Now, when I spoke to Wilson and Blackett about this, they said that there was kind of a stalemate between the farmers who own this land, and they weren't allowing them back on the land. 
they just kind of saw them as pests really um, so I was interested to go down and speak to the farmers and find out why they weren't wanting to have some tests done on this area and now you've suspected that that was there since when the sort of mid 80s uh, I got a photograph from my colleague there in 82 I'm at a village called Unis Abul in South Wales and behind me is a hill on top of which is a, a man-made mound. According to Alan Wilson, um, the Ark of the Covenant is buried inside the man-made part of this hill behind me. And he has in the past tried to get this hill dug up. Um, he's approached the Welsh authorities, he's approached the farmers. The farmers have been talked out of um, having any excavation done. So I'm intrigued to speak to the, to the owners of the land, um, a farm just a few minutes down the road here. So I'm gonna knock on the door so I spoke to the two farmers, two brothers, I had about a 25 minute conversation with them and then I've recorded uh, my recollection of that conversation. It was quite a delicate negotiation. Um, I asked if I could go on the land to take some photographs and they, straight away they said no. Now they said that um, they weren't convinced that he'd actually found anything and they said that, that, that he hadn't actually shown them any, any concrete results there was, that there was anything there so therefore they weren't prepared to have their land dug up based on what they thought was nothing um, but they then did say that, that having said that they didn't go up there and see what he was doing they didn't show much interest um, so I've persuaded them to um, at least get, have an independent person come on the land and do another test and if they do find something there and they can demonstrate it to them that they would possibly then consider uh, having the land excavated. So that's October 2011 I managed to get a verbal agreement off them for me to get an independent person and do some more tests and then possibly have some investigation done after that. Uh, the reason why I'm telling you this is because so many people ask me what's happening with that hill in Unisable Richard when are you going to dig it up? And I'm just, I'm just illustrating to you that I have tried my best to help Wilson and Blackett with this. Okay. Now, so what I did, I put that verbal agreement in writing and I, uh, just to confirm what was agreed. That they were agreeing for me to get an independent person to come on their land. Right. So I then, I actually put an appeal out on the TV show for anyone who's got the type of equipment that can test that land and I got a reply from a company called Mac International Limited and they do testing for Second World War bombs. Um, now the guy was called John Morrison and we agreed, I agreed with him that we would go to Unisable on Saturday the 14th of April 2012 and I sent the farmers a letter explaining this and I sent them company literature from Mac International Limited explaining to the farmers that they would get a full report from this land scanning and then they could, and it would be, wouldn't cost them anything and there would be no disruption to their land. So, um, I informed the, for the farmers that we were going to be there on the 14th of April 2012. After I sent that letter, I got a phone call from them saying, hang on, we want to go through a solicitor with all this, we're not quite happy about this. So I went away, I spoke to Wilson and Blackett and we said, fine, that's not a problem. We will even pay your solicitor's fee to get an agreement drawn up that we can come on the land and do, the, do this scanning. So I then followed that up in writing, saying that we were prepared to pay their solicitor's fees, that we were quite happy for them to have some contract in place before we go on the land. Um, I then reminded them of that fact on the 10th of May and I rang them several times throughout 2012 saying well have you appointed a solicitor, can we speak to your solicitor, or have you got an agreement and, and they just, they either didn't come to the phone, this is Alan Edwards the farmer or he just didn't seem interested, he hadn't appointed a solicitor so I kept ringing, kept ringing, hadn't appointed a solicitor. So <clears throat> the final throw of the dice in April last year I went there and I've just recorded this conversation. I left the camera running in the car, went to the farmhouse, and I'm just showing you this to show you the intransigence of these farmers, because I don't understand it. That's Alan Edwards' house. Hello, uh, can I speak to Alan, please? Yeah. 
who is it? Sorry. My name's Richard, Richard Hall. I think you might know who I am. It's um I was here about eighteen months ago, just asking about the twinny gog and All right. possibly getting it uh, metal detected and scanned. Yeah. Uh I've I've written them a few letters. But yeah. The last one was in April the April last year, April twenty twelve. Yeah. Uh, I think he's, the last time I spoke to him, he said you were, you were thinking of uh, going to a solicitor just to get an agreement. We haven't done anything about it. We haven't done anything about it. Haven't done anything no. about it. No, I don't know whether he's here actually because they lamb in at the minute. All oh, right, okay. But, uh, hang on a minute. No, we're still at work. Sorry. All right. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. All right. Eight o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And I, mean, you, I, I don't know whether you're aware of the, of the claim because yeah. the, the claim is that there's a huge treasure there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, do you know why he wouldn't just want to uh, allow a, a land mm -hmm. scan? Has, has he said why or...? Has Alan said why? Yeah. No, I don't, no. I, at the moment I just, I don't think they're really interested. They're not interested? No. Okay. Is that, do you think that's because they don't believe the claim or or someone said they something to them? They or don't believe the claim, they're not. They, they don't believe it. I haven't seen any of the, because I've, I've produced several TV shows covering the, yeah, the history of... Yeah, we've seen those. You've seen them? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. All right. So so that wouldn't be enough to no. allow us on the land and just have a scan? No, no. Right, no. okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, so the, the, because he did say that he would, he would if he was going to do something, he would need to get a solicitor to draft yeah. up an agreement. We agreed to pay for that. Yeah. But you still wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be interested. Well, he hasn't mentioned it lately, no. He hasn't so, mentioned it? No. Okay. All right, okay. Well, thanks All for your right. help. Okay. okay thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye now. Uh, I didn't speak to Alan Edwards, but I spoke to his wife, and it's just the same as last time. They're just not interested at all. Um, yeah, right. Home Jeeves. Yeah, so I've given up on them, and um, if anyone else wants to... Well, I don't know how you might find their contact details. Right. Okay. <laughs> Can anyone explain that? Alan thinks that they've been got at. Someone said something to them. Um, am I bonkers for wanting to dig that hill up? <laughs>